What's up everyone? Welcome back to Quest Mode. Today we're looking at the top 10 stealth games available for the Nintendo Switch. But first, how do you define a stealth game? Well, they can actually fit within a number of genres, but to me, it's a game where staying undetected and sneaking around your enemies is just as important, if not more important, than actually killing them. And two series of games have defined the genre as we know it. Metal Gear Solid, and to a lesser degree, the Hitman games. But since neither of those are on Switch, what stealth games are available for you to play right now? Well, you might be surprised. Let's take a look. Mutant Year Zero is a turn-based strategy game similar to XCOM or Mario Plus Rabbids, but with a healthy dose of stealth mixed into the formula. Before entering battles, you can scout the area and mark your targets, all while staying hidden. Then you can methodically clear the map without being detected. You can use brute force, but the stealthy approach will make for a far more interesting and less frustrating experience. While the gameplay of Mutant Year Zero is solid, there are several reasons it's last on this list. First, the game has a few bugs and the visuals are just not good, even for a Switch port. Second, it's a bit pricey at $45, even with the inclusion of the Seed of Evil expansion. That said, if you want more Mario Plus Rabbids with the added element of stealth, this is one to check out when it goes on sale. Semispheres is a clever, if brief, puzzle game that has you controlling two spheres at the same time, one with each Joy-Con. You have to figure out how to use both spheres to solve split-screen puzzles and traverse from one side of the map to the other. And you have to do all this without being detected by the game's enemy drones. Using both analog sticks to control two things at once is anything but intuitive, but that adds to the fun and the challenge. As the game progresses, you have to get very creative about how you use your teleportation abilities to avoid getting caught. Again, the game is short, so even at $10, I think it's a tad overpriced, but if you can catch Semispheres when it's on sale, you'll be in for one of the more unique experiences on this list. At a glance, you'd be forgiven for thinking that Sniper Elite V2 is more of an action-focused third-person shooter, but make no mistake, stealthing around is a major part of the gameplay. Missions have you moving across war-torn maps from one checkpoint to the next, clearing enemies as you go. You can do this with guns blazing, but you'll be far more effective by sniping enemies from afar, setting well-placed booby traps, and performing close-range stealth kills. Despite some repetitive missions and somewhat clunky third-person controls, I had fun with Sniper Elite V2. If you like to methodically figure out how to clear contained levels given the limited tools at your disposal, it's definitely worth a look. That said, the reviews were all over the place, so check them out before you pull the trigger. In Serial Cleaner, it's your job as part of an organized crime ring to rid murder scenes of incriminating evidence. Unfortunately for you, each scene is crawling with police, so you have to be sneaky as you achieve your objectives. These include collecting bodies, picking up evidence, and wiping a certain amount of blood off the floor. At first, the game felt super basic, but the challenge quickly ramped up as the stages became more complex and the cops became more plentiful. To be successful, you've got to memorize how each level's design syncs up with enemy patterns, then patiently wait for just the right moment to speed across the stage and complete your objective. It can feel a bit repetitive, especially if you lack patience, but for 15 bucks, I feel Serial Cleaner offers a good amount of precision, pressure-packed stealth. The two games in the Yomawari collection feel like what you might get if you mixed an old-school graphic adventure with the inventory-based puzzles of Resident Evil and the unsettling horror of the Blair Witch Project. While I didn't play the second game in the collection, the first has you sneaking around a town infested with ghostly apparitions which you can't kill but have to avoid altogether using your trusty flashlight. 
The pace is slow, but solving the puzzles spread across the game's map is rewarding, and where the Yomawari games really shine is in their atmosphere. The imagery and sound effects are nothing short of haunting. If you're not into scares, I'd stay away, and even if you are, the game feels a bit pricey at $40, but if you're a fan of adventure games and disturbing horror, this is definitely one to pick up when it goes on sale. In a nutshell, Party Hard is a 2D Hitman game, but with a fantastically hilarious story. You play a serial killer who crashes parties by murdering everyone in attendance. Each level is a different party, and each new environment gives you multiple ways to stealthily kill your victims. You can lure them out and quietly stab them, or you can poison their food, push them off a rooftop, or even crush them with a falling tree. And just like in the Hitman games, it's up to you to discover all the ways Party Hard lets you use your environment to your advantage. To kill absolutely everyone, which is the goal of each stage, you'll have to get resourceful, and if you're not stealthy enough, you'll either get beaten to a pulp or arrested, at which point you'll have to start the level over. If you like non-linear stealth that rewards creativity, this game is a lot of fun. And be warned, this is definitely one for mature audiences only. As someone who likes a challenge, The Swindle is one of my favorite games on this list. It's a rogue light where you stealth around procedurally generated levels in order to steal cash. When you finish a level without getting caught, which is not easy, you return to the hub world where you can spend your loot to unlock items, skills, and more challenging areas. You start out with virtually nothing, but you soon gain a double jump, bombs, the ability to hack security systems, and a ton more. Each randomly generated level can be finished in just a few minutes, but here's the catch. You can only play a hundred levels before you lose all your upgrades and have to start over. It's very difficult and some of the randomly generated levels felt a bit unfair, but thankfully the swindle rewards persistence. You'll get better and better as you play, meaning you'll get closer and closer to finishing the game on each subsequent playthrough. In Origami, you play a spirit assassin with a number of stealth abilities, but to keep your abilities charged and ready for use, you have to stay cloaked in shadow. It's a neat system that forces you to stay hidden while rewarding you for doing so. The handiest of your abilities, teleportation, lets you instantly transport from shadow to shadow. It functions like the grappling hook from the Tenchu games, but it also lets you travel through locked gates. There's also a skill tree with additional abilities to unlock as you go. Adding to the fun is the game's ranking system which rates your attempts through each level. The best rankings can be achieved by either killing all enemies or completing the level without touching anyone. Despite a few graphical glitches, Origami makes you feel like a total badass and it's easy to recommend. The release of Assassin's Creed 3 on Switch marked the arrival of the first and only AAA stealth game on the console. If you never played any of the older AC games, you receive missions that often require you to sneak around whether it's to assassinate a marked target, follow an informant, or eavesdrop on a conversation. But the real allure, at least for me, is that when you're not involved in a mission, you're let loose on one of the richest and most lively open worlds on the Nintendo Switch. You've got a ton of freedom as you perform tasks, hunt down collectibles, and explore points of interest strewn across 18th century America. It also doesn't hurt that the game has a great story and it comes with all the DLC for the base game plus AC3 Liberation, an entire expansion that takes place in the American South. It's been a while since I played Mark of the Ninja, but I remember thinking after completing just the first few stages that this was a truly special game. The way it encourages you to experiment with its clever stealth mechanics is incredibly rewarding. You can hide in the shadows, take out the lights, sneak through vents, throw smoke bombs, or even strike terror into the hearts of your enemies. 
The brilliant level design combined with your diverse arsenal of sneaky skills means you can approach challenges in a multitude of ways, and you're always rewarded for your creativity. Just like in Origami, you can complete each level as a ruthless murderer, or if pacifism is your thing, you can sneak through without killing anyone. However you choose to play, whether you breeze through or meticulously master each stage and find all the collectibles, Mark of the Ninja is a must-play for all gamers, not just stealth fans. So there you have it. Thank you so much for watching the entire video. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up and check out some of my other Switch-related content. And if you want to see what I'm playing and keep up with hidden gems that I find, follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, if you never want to miss any of my videos, all it takes is clicking that subscribe button. Until soon, we'll see you next time.